Hello people, it must have been 3 months since I last uploaded a video. There has been a lot of changes in the past 3 months. There were many of you who called me or messaged me to find out when the next video would be uploaded. Thanks for that. We will talk about the reasons for the delay later. In this video, let's see a simple and interesting automation project. Let's see what that is. I have an old home theater. It's been more than 10 years since I bought it. I don't have the remote for it. Even the buttons are damaged a lot. So I am unable to even switch this on. Even if I manage to switch it on, we have to select the input like whether it's FM radio or the DVD input or through an external audio jack. Then we need to increase its volume because initially the volume is kept very low. Then the default setting is 2.1 output so we have to change it to 5.1. So many steps like these are involved. So today we are going to convert this dumb home theater into a smart home theater. We will try to hack the hardware so that as soon as we switch it on, all this initialization will be automatic. Additionally, this doesn't have any inbuilt wireless capabilities. So we will add Bluetooth connectivity so that we would be able to listen to songs from both PC and mobile. Let's see how to do that. First, we will open the front panel and analyze the circuit board inside. The buttons are damaged and doesn't work properly. We would anyway not be needing these buttons for our smart home theater. We would be simulating the button press programmatically. If you need to pass a signal from circuit A to circuit B, you just need to press a button. Generally, logic low or logic high signals are passed through when a button is pressed. If you see here, there are 4 pins in a button. They would have shorted 2 pins to make it into a single pin. So each button now has 2 pins and there are totally 5 buttons here. Let's take a pin from each of these buttons and short it together with either logic low or logic high. Let's call these as inputs. The other 5 pins called the outputs can be connected to the inputs of circuit B. Now when a button is pressed, the signal will pass from circuit A to circuit B and circuit B can perform any on or off functions based on its inputs. But when we analyze the circuit board, we find that there is a common input signal for the three buttons and a different common input signal for the remaining two buttons. In order to know why they have kept such an arrangement of input signals to the buttons, we will analyze the data sheet of the IC where the button outputs join, which is the circuit B in this case. So this is the data sheet. If you analyze the data sheet, the input signal K1 and K2 don't seem like a normal on or off signal. They look like a clock signal. Now I have connected the input signal of the switch to the oscilloscope inputs of my analog discovery board. You can see here, instead of displaying just a low or high signal, it looks like a pulse width modulated signal. So every time we press a button, these set of signals change the state of the home theater. Since we will not be needing a physical button press, we will need to find a solution to input these signals in a different way to simulate the button press event. So how do we do that? For this purpose, I am going to use my Arduino Nano board. Since the signal on the circuit A looks like a pulse width modulated wave, we will read the input signal through the Arduino's digital pin and write it through another digital pin. The output signal from Arduino can then be given as input signal to the home theater so that without pressing the switch, we can change the state of our home theater. Let's do a small test. My home theater is now switched off. Now I have to set this programmatically such that in the Arduino, as soon as the Arduino board gets reset and within 100 milliseconds, we will simulate the input signal of the power switch. I am now loading the program. As soon as this is loaded, the home theater should switch itself on. Let's see if that happens. Programming starts. Yes! It's switched on. Similarly, we would need to program for the remaining pins too. We have now done the programming. We need to fix the programmed Arduino board to the home theater. We will need to solder all the corresponding inputs and power signals to it. Let's stick this with glue. Alright, time to test this. Let me play a song now. 
the home theater is off now. As soon as I switch on the power and after 5 seconds, the home theater should switch itself on. Powering on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Home theater is switched on now. Now it needs to select the input from audio jack. Increase the volume and convert it to 5.1. Awesome. So one part now has been automated. Let's go to the next part. I usually play music from multiple machines or using my phone. That being the case, it's not practical to be connecting wires for all these devices. So I'm planning to convert this to a Bluetooth enabled smart home theater. That's quite simple. I have tried many options for this, but the most appealing to me was to use this particular module. This is MHM28 Bluetooth audio module. We have a power supply input and a stereo socket as well. Apart from that, we also have the pin headers for the power and audio inputs. Take a closer look. We have the left side audio, right side audio, ground and the power supply inputs. Let me now connect my speaker and power to the Bluetooth module. Let me now check if I am able to control this from my mobile. I am enabling Bluetooth and trying to connect to the module. The connection is successful. Ah, I am able to control and play the songs from my mobile. Now let's place this setup inside the home theater and glue it. Let's remove the back panel. We need to find the pins connecting the audio jack to the PCB board and solder wires from those pins and connect it to the Bluetooth module. The end-to-end -end setup is almost ready. I am closing this now. Let me use my computer to connect via Bluetooth and find out if we can play a song. Awesome! That's it! That's it for this week. I will meet you all with another interesting project next week. Thanks for watching this video. See you again.